Welcome to the Poor Choice video series where I, John McClellan, drink the worst liquor in the world. We have lots of new subscribers. Welcome to the program and thank you for being my accomplice. Now, I found a channel recently that all they show is fireplaces and campfires and I love it. The ironic thing is the campfire was the first television screen. Back in the old days, everybody sat around and watched a campfire. And I think that's why they cooked the shit out of everything back then, because that was entertainment. Everything got tossed on the fire. There were no clocks, so the cooking went on forever. Hey, what did your tribe do last night? Uh, we uh, binge-watched season one of Horse Carcass. It is my belief this is also how the making of alcohol began. They came across some stuff they just couldn't grill. And if it wasn't tender after cooking it through an entire moon cycle, they would just boil it for the high harvest until the stalks in the fields reached the furrowed brow of the village elder. Okay, it most likely didn't happen like that, but that explanation story would work for gin because when you make gin, you have to cook it twice. That's how committed they are. When you prepare gin, you start the first batch by making a neutral spirit with juniper berries. Juniper berries are the main flavor for gin. Gin is allowed to taste bad because nobody can realistically tell you what a good juniper should taste like. If you've ever watched the TV show The Masked Singer, you know what I'm talking about. It's beyond explanation. When the first part is done, you cook it up again with other plants used as flavoring agents, and the plants are called botanicals. Botanicals, just a fancy word for what you skim off the top of a compost heap. Essentially, cooking something that nobody wants, and then recooking it, with stuff nobody wants. If gin was a food, it would be a hot dog. It's full of some really bad things, and you don't want to know what they are. But we don't eat on this show. We drink. And today, we are drinking bathtub gin. There are three types of gin. London dry gin, distilled gin, and just gin. The term bathtub gin came about during the Prohibition era, when they made gin so bad it actually killed thousands of people. It wasn't actually made in a bathtub, though. You need a sealed container to make alcohol. But they used the spout from the bathtub to fill the gin jugs because they couldn't get them underneath the kitchen sink. If bathtub gin was actually made in a bathtub, there's no way it would smell as bad as it does. Now, if you drink gin, you can forget about doing anything under the radar because everyone can smell what you've been drinking. The smell of gin trumpet blast your arrival louder than that emergency alert system announcement you get on TV when you're trying to watch the end of a movie. Now you can drink gin straight, but it has to be good gin, made in a good place. The stuff we are drinking today is made in a building where if you have a full set of teeth, you're overdressed. I should probably have a warning running along the bottom of the video that says professional drinker, do not attempt. Oh, oh, it smells like the inside of a cab. Now it smells like the inside of an Uber. Ah! Who hurt you? <laughs> The label should be backwards, like the lettering in the front of an ambulance, so you could see something bad is happening and you can get out of the way. You ever see a dog rolling poop? They do that to hide their own smell so they can go after something undetected. If you need to try and get away with something, you should be the dog and let Jim be your poop. Go have a cigarette, cheat on your spouse, get a pumpkin spice latte, then douse yourself in gin. No one will want to even get close enough to ask you where you've been. I'm John McClellan, and I'm a helper.